I cannot see somebody just figuring this out on that day. Sure. But because I had the, the foreknowledge, because I had uh, predicted this event, then I could see this for what it was. And I see it as a magical spell. I see these guys as occultists, and, the, and this is how they work. And, and it's very interesting what you say in, in regards to the holographic mind, because, again, the, the holographic idea is that everything is incorporated into the, the smaller uh, portions of things. The whole is incorporated in the small, meaning that if... Um, you know, a few people know about this, you know, let's say how they, you know, how you fold that particular bill in order to create this image. That is in a way that is out there, that is accessible. And even actually, I think that our brains potentially can make these types of calculations um, by itself, in, in a sense, on an unconscious level, of course, meaning that we don't consciously know that this is what we're looking at when we're holding a bill like that, what you're describing. Exactly. But, we, but we can put it together in an unconscious way, meaning that the the signs and the symbols as it were is all over the place and this is potentially also how they are you know creating reality i think that they're doing that with our aid i think that they need to put this out there ahead of time not only to try to just you know get us to go along with it but also think that we collectively the human race are participatory in actually how reality plays out and even how successful it plays out meaning that the longer and the more blatantly they've managed to get a symbol, a, a sign, uh, some kind of indication of what they're planning to do out there in our collective mind unconsciously, the probably the more successful this event will become. Uh, do you know? Do you know? Do you follow my train of thought, oh, Freeman? I agree with you exactly on that. And I see, you know, as I when I when I stated that there was going to be a major terrorist attack, I said, don't, you know, this is all for your reaction. Mm -hmm. So now I see uh, people like Alex Jones, not as a, a foe, but as someone who bought into the story and therefore is now giving the proper reaction that they were expecting. They, yeah, you yeah. know, the 9-11 was so obviously an inside job. I mean, it was so obvious that it was a controlled demolition. Uh, but they knew that there would be a split between the people of uh, that those that could agree that the government's evil and those that couldn't. Mm -hmm. And they expected this war to to create itself. And so Alex is just following exactly as they had intended. And that was my whole point was like, you know, don't get upset about this. Don't start to freak out and want war because uh, that's what they're trying to get from you is this angry uh, response. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's playing into the game and, and, and absolutely just replying to, to probably what they want to begin with. And that's why it's so important to study it, be aware of it, of course, but, but again, not maybe on that emotional level to be drawn into it. Yet again, it's very difficult because... Also, at the same time, what you're doing is that you're, you know, when you bring in this information out there to too many, the majority of the people, um, then you're also helping to contribute to their own kind of awakening to a larger reality that might begin at the end or at the at the start point, I, sh I should say, of 9-11 and, and begin to realize that, wait a minute, you know, something's not right here and they begin to open up their mind. Consequently, a whole new world potentially is opening up to them and they might be going to these, you know, wonderful areas of later on, you know, the occult, esoteric things going on behind the surface, uh, spirituality, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a good opening and eye opener for people to Absolutely. begin to study it. But then again, I guess what you're saying is to not be drawn into the, uh, the reactionary mode of, of, of the programming that is going on here. Is, is that right? That's exactly correct. Yeah, if we start to look at uh, everyone now, Bush leaves office and signs a little legislation saying, "Well, you guys can't prosecute me, right? Mm -hmm, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm exonerated from any uh, crimes I might have done. Let me just throw out this last executive order before I leave." Uh, this is to foment more people to start to push for a world court. Uh, to get people angry enough so that they're wanting to get revenge, to get justice, and uh, and so they're going to be asking and begging for a world court to take down these people. And so we fulfill the agenda by them uh, pulling on our heartstrings. Well, Absolutely. That's that's interesting. You mentioned that I actually got this the same hunch about we have a case here now in Sweden about uh, Pirate Bay, actually, uh, all the torrent s stuff that is going on. And um, one idea that has been circulating uh, around this, uh, the idea of file sharing I'm, I'm talking about here, uh, has been that. You know, these guys can only move to another place and set up their service there and continue their um, 
business, so to speak, from from there. And what I'm seeing this leading into eventually is the also the the, the possible suggestion of of a, of a world court or some kind of um, you know international law that that can you know that can override national law and 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 consequently try to get towards these people. I'm not saying that everyone you know within the fire pay or whatever is in on this, but again, there's a lot of interesting people that is involved in these types of cases and and who knows these th- these types of things might be used for another purpose a higher agenda as it were and uh, this is the small stepping stones and these are the issues that people are passionately getting involved in uh, but this again consequently could lead to something more so it's definitely worth keeping an eye on those types of things definitely yeah keep the, keep the guidelines on the guide stones in mind as you're looking at things and you know, realize that this is the the outcome that's wanted yes and you know, then you know watch as the events unfold absolutely so we better uh, w- w- what if you just quickly go back again to to july fourth um and and so in that sense, you're making another prediction here what in in more clear context can you put this in is the, is there do you think you know do you have an idea rather of of what type of event we're looking at here would it would it be more symbolic or more in your in your face type of event what what do you think i think it will be in your face and being a guy that has large v-shaped craft fly over his head i really think that it's going to play into this new extraterrestrial idea i think this is why the pope's coming out with this uh you know aliens are our space brothers and they don't uh <laughs> suffer original sin mm-hmm. uh I think that we might just have uh, this contact. So I'm starting to think because of the ID4, even Independence Day and all of that, yeah. uh, that this might be an extraterrestrial event. The that's 1013 occurring. X-Files, we've talked about that before, of course, but that's another Absolutely. programming, Absolutely. if you will, going on. <laughs> yeah, and they, they gave away the whole 9, 9-11 uh, <laughs> event before it occurred, you know, on Absolutely. the Lone Gunman. Lone Gunman, yeah. Yeah, like you say, his production company's 1013. Uh, this is, yeah, how much do you need? Uh, but now things are starting to get really strange as we start to look at this Baraka Naughton. Yes. I mean, this picture blew my mind, Henrik. Mm-hmm. I, I, I had no idea. I really had no idea. Um, uh, and I had no idea the study that that, that very picture was going to was going to bring about. Now, just so you know, I have the picture up on the blog. I have it up on on MySpace. I don't have it on FreemanTV.com yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go to the FreemanPerspective.blogspot.com, you will see this image of Baraka Naughton and Renaissance tie is what I have titled this. Mm. Uh, th- this blew my mind, Henrik. I mean, when you start to look at this picture. When you see that I I did not manipulate the faces of the president and Michelle at all. Mm -hmm. All I did was put their face over the face of Akhenaten for Barack and cut it in half. And I mean, it's it's identical. It's it's mind blowing. And then after I had released this this image, this was one of the first ones that I went into uh, just noting Barack Akhenaten. Uh, someone else wrote me and said, yeah, I was on the same type of uh, line and researching this as well. And I began to think that maybe Michelle looked like Queen Tai. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Queen Tai is the mother of Akhenaten. Okay, so yes. not his wife, but his mother. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, and when I took a, a high school photo of, of Michelle Obama... And I put her face over that of Queen Ty. Mm. And I mean, you can hardly even tell that I cut her face in half. No, it's. You can hardly. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you... I saw the Barack Naughton image uh, from before. People have made the comparisons, but I haven't seen uh, Queen, Queen Ty and Michelle uh, overlay like that. And that really blew my mind when I see it. And I, I will link up this image, of course, on Whereas Creations as well. Um, credit to you, Freeman. You, you put this together. And then, of course, on top of that, you did. I guess that you did this consequently or afterwards. You did uh, the two kids that they have as well, didn't you? Yes. As I started to get, I mean, I went through a whole line and lineage of uh, of the uh, the pharaohs, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I'm doing a new radio show now called the Free Zone on Oracle Broadcasting. Mm-hmm. 
And so uh, last uh, Saturday night at 8 p.m. is when my show is, uh, I went over this whole bloodline and outlining the different pharaonic lines and how they correlated with the biblical patriarchs, much like uh, Ralph Ellis and Tessarian have done on your show. Yes. Uh, so I went back to all of that data so that we could get that straight. Uh, because, you know, once I started to put this picture together and realize that these people were identical replicas of these ancient pharaohs and that the pharaohs were related, uh, then I came to the part that showing that Barack Akhenaten, or Akhenaten, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm just getting them confused because they're the same people, uh, had two daughters through Nefertiti. Mm -hmm. He had he had many children, uh, I believe six, but two of them to Nefertiti, these two daughters. And when I went to look at the ancient Egyptian uh, fresco of the Akhenaten, his wife Nefertiti, with the two daughters, what you see is, of course, Akhenaten was the one that brought forth monotheism, and he was uh, worshipping Aten. Yes. Uh, Aten. Uh, and so when you look at the, the frieze, the fresco of, of Agnaten with his wife and the two daughters, you'll see the rays of the sun coming down and, and shining upon them. And then they're holding flowers, the daughters. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get to uh, the Secret Service's nicknames for the first family, you will find that the Malaya is, is Radiance. Mm -hmm. is her, her secret name and Sasha is Rosebud okay. which of course was another famous code word passed through the, the Knights of Malta in, a, in that um, uh, Citizen Kane was it uh, uh, okay. Rosebud was the password ah uh -huh. okay yeah there we go that's right but when we're looking at the, the image though when we're looking at the image of Akhenaten with, with Nefertiti and we see him with his two daughters and we see the radiance and we see the rosebuds uh, you know is this coincidence? Hmm. I wonder. No. Uh, no. Yeah, not at all. And then, of course, Obama is renegade and Michelle is renaissance. And that's why I call the picture Barack Akhenaten and renaissance tie. Right, right. And, and renegade, again, that's very much like, well, Akhenaten, actually, the renegade who, 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 you know, went against the grain in a sense and took off and did his own thing and set up his own city down there and things like that, you know. So it, it plays into it again, actually. Yes, absolutely. And that's when you get to Heliopolis, Heliopolis uh, that is the sun and uh, is known as, as the city of On or the city of Anu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so we start to get to the correlations with the Elohim or uh, Zechariah Sitchin studies. And once you start to track this bloodline of Akhenaten and you go back and back and back all the way back, you end up with the biblical patriarchs. But if you go one more step back, you end up with Enki having sex with Eve. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. uh, according to like Lawrence Gardner's uh, work and also Zechariah Sitchin, but Lawrence Gardner took the lineage a bit further than, than uh, Sitchin did. Mm -hmm. And he has these Hyksos queen kings connected to uh, Enki having sex with Eve, which then gave birth to... Uh, I don't have the lines in front of me. Uh, Cain, right? So we have the Enki Eve having sex with uh, Enki having sex with Eve, creating this new bloodline. Mm -hmm. So there was the bloodline of Adam and Eve that were the Lulu, uh, but then the uh, Enki and Eve produced Cain, and the line of Cain comes down through a ton, who was the first Hyksos king of Cush, mm -hmm. uh, then Enoch, and then Methuselah, Noah, Shem. And then down into Abraham, and then we get to uh, you know the biblical patriarchs. But we can track these back to perhaps the certain serpent people. Yes. Now the reason I bring this up is because when Akhenaten came into power, things got very strange. Akhenaten looked very alien. Yeah. And he was known as this hermaphroditic king. You know, he had a, a very feminine shaped body, a very weird shaped body. Uh, and he, it was, it, it, they made it news in the BBC just to highlight that Akhenaten was a hermaphroditic king. Hmm. And I don't know why they, you know, they bring this into public attention again. Right, right. Hmm. Uh, the elongated head, very weird, uh, you know, facial structure overall. It looks very, very weird in a way, definitely. Exactly. And then, of course, when you see the poor, I mean, I know, I know that uh, Sasha is going to hate me for it. But when you look at the image of Sasha and uh, 